So you want to be an interior designer or decorator. I'm going to show you how I started out making spaces like this as a beginner to way more advanced and more highly decorated and just beautiful spaces like this in a short amount of time and also how you can do this without any formal education. I'm going to be talking about a ton of information today on this video so I will leave links down below on chapters so you can skip to the parts that mean the most to you or you can go back and rewatch parts that you want to as you go along on your journey. So without further ado I'm going to get into my story, how I got started and how you can do this too. So first, let's talk about the difference between interior design and interior decorating. If you don't know me, I have my notes here, so I don't forget anything that I would need to talk about today. So an interior designer is design focus, which that means you'll be making architectural designs. Um, you will be a part of the construction process. You would do space planning. Um, there's tons of more technical things that you do when you are an interior designer. Um, this also includes efficiency, health and safety, acoustics, um, environmental impacts, permits. There's tons of things that go into interior design. Uh, and that's why people say that you need a formal education, but nowadays you can teach these things to yourself or go to more of like a trade school versus getting a four year college degree. Now with interior decorating, that's where you more focus on furnishing, on painting, on walls, furniture, uh, textiles, rugs, the fun stuff where the space is already completed and you're just coming in and decorating. So that's the difference between an interior designer and an interior decorator. So you can know which one that you are wanting to be. So now let me go ahead and talk to you a little bit about my experience, what I've done, and how you can get started too with little to no experience in interior design and decorating. So I got started on my interior design and interior decorating journey back in 2016. This was the first space that I did. This was my grandmother's bedroom and we DIY'd everything. We didn't work with a huge budget because she was on a limited budget and we purchased things over time, found good deals on things and then once we got everything, um, I went and installed the room with the help of my mother. We painted, we used different techniques that you're gonna have to learn when you don't have large budgets. Like instead of using wallpaper because we didn't have the budget, we used fabric and starch to hang up the fabric on the wall as a wallpaper substitute. Um, this is a technique that people use all the time and have been using for years. And that is a part of learning and DIY and that's gonna help you um, over your career. There's times where you won't have the largest budgets, but you still need to make a space look amazing. And for my first time, I think this space turned out amazing. Um, from that point, my grandmother also let me do her bathroom, which was tedious. But in that process, I learned how to lay flooring. I learned how to replace a toilet, hang mirrors, do lighting. Um, I learned from the ground up. I learned how to do everything because that only aids me into making spaces as beautiful as possible. And sometimes with a really small budget. Um, uh, I think once you can work with small budgets and make something beautiful, it makes it 20 times easier to work with large budgets and, you know, getting a, a similar beautiful um, result. So learning is what I did, DIY the heck out of everything between YouTube University, Pinterest, just researching different ways you can do things is how you're going to be able to really build a strong design sense, a strong design outlook and be able to work with any budget under the sun. I think that, you know, we all see HGTV and all these shows where they have, you know, 20, 40, $60,000 budgets. But if you can make a space beautiful with $1,500, I think that's where true talent comes from. Okay, so we are on the what you need to learn segment. Now, I have my phone here because I have notes and I do not want to forget anything. Um, but the first thing that I think you need to learn is space planning. If you want to do interior to decorating or design, it, or interior design or interior decorating, it does not matter. You need to learn space planning. You're not going to put a sofa in front of a fireplace you know, like the back of it. You're not gonna put a TV on the left part of the room and everything else is on the right. You need to learn space planning and how to properly plan a space. Whether you wanna use just your 
measurements and knowing what is going to go where if you want to use takedowns where you can find out measurements of the furniture the items you want to use tape it use painters tape and tape it on the floor um, you can do that or you can go more technical and use a design software to do space planning and later in this video I'm gonna talk about all the design softwares that are out there and what are my favorite the next thing that you need to know as we talk about space planning is furniture specs so you have to do measurements no matter what type of space you're working with you have to measure you have to measure the length the width the height you need to measure you know what size sofa is going to fit in the space what size tv is going to fit in the space what type of art is going to fit on the walls you have to take tons of measurements like for sofas obviously one thing that's super important about sofas is the depth of the sofa there are different depths for sofas and that means how much booty room you have to sit on now some people are wanting beautiful apartment sofas because they're not going to be you know lounging on their sofas in much they just want to have a nice looking design and that is up to your client or yourself or whoever you're servicing you know you're designing for but some people want loungers some people have families and they want a sofa that everyone can get on and cuddle up on and they need deeper depths sofas versus someone who's in an apartment and may just sit on their sofa and watch TV from time to time. That's something that you need to know and it helps you design for that person's lifestyle and not just for the look. Also about fabrics durability and best uses. So fabrics durability and best uses are really for your client and for their lifestyles. If you have a client with three kids and they want a light sofa, you're going to need um, stain proof fabrics like that's just what you're gonna have to do and that goes back into knowing where to purchase stuff from and educating yourself about things outside just making things look pretty um, you may have a client who loves velvet and they only want a velvet sofa um, you know and you have to tell them about you know the pros and cons of velvet and stuff like that like maybe they have a dog and they want a velvet sofa that may not be the best option because velvet contains it holds a lot of hair and tons of different things that you'll learn about fabrics and durability and things like that to help best guide your client or yourself into the right type of sofa or fabric or finish for them so again these are all things that I learned on the way and that are super important and, and getting a good design yes it's about the look but it's also about those technical things as well also um, learning how to source so you can anybody can just go on Walmart Wayfair Amazon you know our house at home and just purchase items um, but knowing where to source certain items from is super important not only to you to the client but it makes your process so much easier uh, when I first started it would take me six eight hours to just plan one room now I'm down to about an hour to two hours to plan a space through its entirety and make sure that I have everything on budget right sizes and all that good stuff it doesn't take me long at all um knowing how to source is not only important but it's the one of the to me is one of the funnest parts of interior design and decorating so sourcing can go from places like the thrift store facebook market all the way to high-end and custom furniture it just depends on your budget what your needs are and what you are looking for for instance you may have a customer who wants everything brand new and that's perfectly fine and that's when you can source items from stores from online um, showrooms you know wherever you're looking for your items you may be a person you may be working with a client who wants a more unique look and they're okay with found items they are okay with thrift store items or people who have small budgets those are places that you have to source as well. You have to source from thrift stores, Facebook market, secondhand, um, knowing where to source things, how to source things and how to save money or uh, allocate your funds properly to get a good design is something that's super important to do. And it's not that hard, but it's also not that easy, but learning and going along the way, you'll definitely learn how to do so. 
So we talked about some of the technical stuff. Now let's talk about finding inspiration. Now, obviously you wanna go with your own mind and you know your own design skills and the things that come from your heart and your mind to make spaces for people. But it doesn't hurt to start out with some inspiration to see how others are doing things and how you can do them differently, but also still get a great space. Um, some of my favorite ways to find inspiration are color palettes, um, also design books and tons of other places. Now I'm gonna give you my top 10 places for um, design inspiration and I'm gonna make sure I leave the names of everything down below and link them if I can. Um, so number one is going to be Apartment Therapy. Apartment Therapy is an online website that discovers departments from all over, um, all different styles. You can search by style, you can search by furniture type. There's so many ways to search Apartment Therapy and find inspirations for what you're trying to accomplish in your space. Um, Architectural Digest. Obviously, Architectural Digest is on the higher end of things, so those are gonna be really high-end, pricey rooms that come from the top designers all over the world um, and are for people with larger budgets, but you don't have to have a huge budget to look at Architectural Digest because inspiration can come from anywhere and there's always dupes, DIYs, and ways to get um, high-end items on a budget. House. House is a great place to search from because they have, again, they don't just have decor stuff. They also have architectural and interior design inspiration, uh, whether it's space planning, building from the ground up. And one thing I love about House is that a lot of the items that you see on them, you can actually shop through their website. So if you see inspiration, they may have a link directly to the couch in the photo and you can actually shop it. Um, and they give you that item and also similar items that may be more or less into you, in your budget, just depends on what you're looking at. Um, design to inspire and home stratosphere. They are more just design inspiration. They've been around for a long time and both places have great design inspiration. This old house. This old house again has been around for a very long time. They have more eclectic, earthy, um, more found item type of design, um, interior design inspiration. So that's a great place for if you want to have more found or more like that type of design. Uh, one of my top favorites is Pinterest. Um, I love Pinterest because Pinterest is made from real, obviously all these spaces are from real people, but Pinterest are spaces from real people who are doing real things, who are making their homes and their spaces look beautiful. Um, and Pinterest is so easy to use, it's free to use. All these sites are free to use, but Pinterest is one of my favorites because not only can you see the design, like most of these design spaces and design inspiration, but Pinterest, you can also get instructions and learn from the designs that you see. So you can get inspiration, but you also can maybe learn how to paint fabric or learn how to make DIY art or learn how to do whatever from the design inspiration. So that's why Pinterest is one of my top options. Um, and I think it's the best. <laughs> um, we also have Laurel and Wolf in the Spruce. Again, there's a both online um, websites that offer design inspiration and I think they're also they have a wide range of styles that you can choose from and view and I think that they are great places for inspiration as well. Now we are going to go ahead and get over into design softwares, what I use, what you guys can use, and some of the most popular options in the interior design world. And again, I will link as many places as I can down below if you want to use some of these design softwares. Okay. So if you are, so my number one, what I use, uh, because again, I do do some interior design, but I mostly do decorating. Um, and what I use is Canva. Canva is free 99. I will leave a link down below if you want to get started on Canva. And you could pretty much take every item that you find online that you want to use in a space and put it on to a vision board. I will show you some of my vision boards on the screen that I've made on Canva. Uh, I think it's an awesome place to make a vision board the only downside is it doesn't have like a a budget ringer where you can obviously you know keep the prices of the item that you use on a separate spreadsheet or like notes or whatever you use but i wish that that was the ability that canva had but it's free so 
I definitely think it's a great resource to use to make vision boards so that you can see what the completed space is possibly going to look like and it also gives a client something that they can visually look at and say okay I can see what my space is going to look like because a lot of people hire interior designs and decorators because they just don't have the vision to make the space what they want so Canva is my number one um, the next thing you're going to a lot of people use is SketchUp. So SketchUp is a program that you can pretty much do space planning. You can add furniture. There's tons of things, different things you can use with SketchUp. I believe, let me see, I should have looked this up before I did this video. Okay, so SketchUp is $119 per year, so $119 and you can use that on the web browser, Chromebook, or an iPad. Um, it has like pre-built 3D models, augmented reality, so like those before and afters, like where they drop the walls and all that stuff that they do on like HGTV shows that has that feature. Um, and then unlimited cloud storage. And that's just like their basic, um, their basic um, plan. And then they go up to Pro, which is $299, offers a few more things, Studio, and go from there. Um, SketchUp has a low learning curve, so it's not that hard to use. And I think that's a great program for anyone who wants to kind of get more technical and really get into the interior design and decorating space. Also, I think the best for um, floor plans is SmartDraw. Um, again, SmartDraw is similar to SketchUp, but it's really great for floor plans. So if you want to plan a space out without adding furniture in it, and you want to just know, okay, this wall is going to come down here. This is the half wall. This is where the door opening is. This is where the stairs are. That's um, what Smart Draw is best for. Now, if you don't have a computer and you want to do something just on your phone, the best option for that is Magic Plan. Magic Plan is a great feature, a great program that you can use directly on like any phone. If you don't have a computer and you want to just get started with what you have, that is a great program to get started with. And I think Magic Plan doesn't cost that much either. I believe Magic Plan. Um, I think I think they have a free option. And then their yearly is $100 a year. And then they have a monthly option, which is $9.99 per month. So and you get 2D and 3D sketches, unlimited projects and measurements and all that good stuff that the other programs offer. Um, and then the best like beginner software, if you just want to start, you know, just use whatever you have available for you is um, Planner 5D. Now, I didn't look up the prices before I did this video. I should have. But who's perfect? <laughs> not me, not you, not me. No one's perfect. Um, so Planner 5D is you can design your three home, a dream home. It's 2D, 3D, very easy to use, very advanced software. Um, even though it's, it's simple to use, um, and it's free. So that is one of the best things um, to get used to get started. Um, uh, planner 5d and like I said there's many things because some things don't have links but as many things that I can link below I will and I also leave like the chunks of names and the, the softwares and the all that good stuff down below now let's talk about trade discounts now what a trade discount is is that a retail store offers a discount on their furniture home decor you know textiles whatever their products for people of the trade, meaning interior designers and decorators. Now, every trade program has different qualifications and I can't go over each place and each qualification and stuff like that. But what I am going to do is provide you with some of my favorite, um, some of my favorite places that offer trade discounts. And most of these don't require much besides like an email or like an EIN number for your business, which is like a, um, the EIN number is like your business social security number, which you can get for free. Um, or if you, or sometimes they require like your LLC information, which I have a whole video on how you can get your LLC for free. So I'll put that link up here somewhere if you want to check that out as well. So some of the best places to get signed up and who actually have really great discounts. Uh, Wayfair is one of my favorite. Wayfair has a separate website for professionals. You don't even shop the Wayfair website. They have a completely separate website for Wayfair, Wayfair professionals for interior design and decorating where they have lower prices on their items. Now there, theirs is not a set discount. There are lower prices on items. Some items you may see a $10 difference on the trade discount, which you only get a $10 um, 
discount, but some items are 50% off, some items are 60% off, but they will let you know on each item what the trade discount is, which is a really great thing, especially because tons of people, you know, want things from Wayfair, so it's a great way to save money for your clients and also keep more money in your pocket if you're, pay, you know, being paid to design. Uh, Ashley Furniture is another one of them that's easy to get signed up for. Their trade discount is bomb. I purchased a dresser for a project, which I'll show this this bedroom that I did. I purchased a dresser from there. The retail price, I believe, was $3.99. The trade price was $1.99. So their trade program is the bomb. And I don't think it was that hard to get signed up for. Um, Rove Concepts, they are more higher end furniture store, but they have a trade discount too. There's a between five and 10%, but again, any money that's saved for your clients, more money in your pocket. Um, Toe Furniture, they are a unique furniture store. They have tons of cool, trendy furniture um and they have a good price point they're more on the higher more on the mid-range i would say of things um but they have tons of furniture that is like I'll, I'll show you a few things that is uh so super trendy super quality and they are like one of the lead the lead people in like design world that comes up with like new and unique styles for furniture uh, we also have restoration hardware, which again, these are all on the higher end of things. Um, but again, it's still great to be a part of their trade program if you have clients with bigger budgets. Um, CB2 also has a trade program, again, on the higher end of things. Crate and Barrel. Crate and Barrel, I feel like is in the middle, depending on what you're looking at. Um, they have a trade program as well that's pretty easy to get into. Uh, West Elm. I love West Elm. I love so many of their items. Uh, again, they're on a little bit higher end, just depending on what your client's budget is. Um, but they have a great trade program. Um, One Kings Lane. Oh, if you're looking for a headboard, something unique, something flashy, One Kings Lane is the place to be. Um, again, they have a great trade program and something that you should definitely get signed up for. And then the last place that I is easy to get signed up for, and again. All, there's tons of other places that have trade programs, but these are just the ones that I personally have used and have gotten a good discount on items, um, and that is the inside. So the inside is, again, like a trendy furniture place that have unique items. Their, their prices range, you know, some are high, some are low. It just depends. And then, oh, one more, and that is World Market. Um, I love World Market. Again, they have a range of different prices on their website, but they're great for finding unique things and high high quality items for your clients. So those are some of the places that have trade discounts and that's important for you to know so you can save money. You can make those budgets stretch farther. Even if it's saving $200, that $200 can go to textiles. That $200 can go to lighting. That $200 can go to a lot of other things by just using trade discounts to save money on products you are already gonna buy. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is alternate education. So you don't want to do a four-year degree. Um, you don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to do that. You don't want to do a two-year degree either. There are alternative ways to learn about interior design and decorating. Um, I have a free way and then I have a paid way that I would definitely recommend. So the free way, the first free way, obviously you can go on YouTube and you can read articles and stuff like that. But I think that things that some people look over are interior design podcasts. They give out so much free game on these podcasts that can really help like just blow your brain up and help you learn so much and it's more about the there's the design part but there's so much more to interior design that's why people i like hate when people look down on it or like or if you don't have a degree that you don't still do a lot because there's so much to do um and the interior design podcast they also help you with like running your business pricing um how to deal with clients you know good clients bad clients how to deal with contractors and third party people that you're going to have to work with in order to exec execute your design those things are super important as well so one of my favorite and he doesn't really um he's kind of inconsistent with his posting but just listen to all the podcasts and this the idc the the interior design consultant podcast he also does like paid education on his website which you can check that out but tons of free game such a great podcast such a great person chef's kiss is so so good um the also another one is the creative edition podcast they give you a lot of free game it's not necessarily 
just interior design but it's so much free game about being a, a creative a paid creative and just it it's so good it's so good um also the um inside design with Kadrick and Cole these are um this is another interior design podcast they just talk about their adventures things that they've done like I learned through them I learned about High Point Market which is like the market that they have every six months in um, High Point North Carolina and that's where all designers go to find out about everything new in the industry I never heard about it never knew about it until I listened to this podcast so it was definitely great another one um that is kind of in the interior design world but can help you if you have a certain type of client um is the str success stories with julian sage now that is about short-term rentals now every episode of theirs won't apply to interior design but it's good to learn about short-term rentals if you're going to be like an airbnb designer or something like that they are a good podcast to listen to um, so those are some of the free game. They, I mean, these podcasts give out so much free game, guys. And it's just a matter of you listening. Whether you're just washing the dishes or whatever. Just have a little pen and paper or your phone or whatever. Just listen to what they're saying. Take notes. Take things that make sense to you and are important to you. And I'm telling you, so much free game. And it's amazing. So um, just like me, I give out free game because there's more everybody going everybody can eat and obviously they have podcasts so they get paid that way i have a youtube channel so i get paid that way but it's free game nevertheless you're not paying for it so it's free <laughs> so let's talk about the paid um part part of this alternative education which is not yet it's the new york institute of art and design um, it's all online, so this is a self-paced course that you can take. Um, you can pay for it in full. You can pay for it in monthly installments. I think it's a really great option for people who want to try, who want to learn items about interior design education, but don't want to spend, you know, obviously twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a college education to do so. There, um, they have a they have a strong catalog too, um, about like the courses that they have. They offer interior design course, graphic design course. They offer home staging. Um, there's tons of different things that you can learn from them, and the pricing is really good. So like for the, I'm just looking at their website really quickly, so I don't tell you anything that's incorrect. But like, they have six units for the interior design course that you take off you take over and then they have like a tuition and you get a certificate you get a certification at the end of your education the certification i don't think really does anything but it's good to have it's nice to have and also it's really just for you to educate yourself um so to pay in full they are $8.99 um to pay in monthly installments um which you can pay like $69 a month is $1,200 yeah, one 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 nine nine, so twelve hundred dollars, which I think is awesome for the education that they give you, guys. I'm working on the code with them with Nyad, so if you look down below and look at the Nyad link, I'm going to try to get a discount code. I don't know, but by the time this video comes out, I have worked with them to try to get a code for you guys. So you, if you do want to go with this alternate education route, that you can get a slight discount um, in order to educate yourself on this. So. Those are um, the two options, the free game and the paid if you want to do educate yourself a little bit more. And now, yeah, you do get 25% off if you enroll in more than one course. Um, but again, that, that's up to you. And like I mentioned, those like they have home staging and, and graphic design, which all those things can help you in your interior design journey. Um, so that is the alternate education part of this video. <laughs> And last but not least is designing your own spaces. That is the quickest and easiest way to get started is creating and designing your own spaces and sharing it online uh, to the world. That is gonna help you get your foot in the door and help you really start branching out, finding clients or finding people who enjoy what you do. So just get started. Plan, go on camp, use all the free resources that you can if you just want to get started that way. Go on Canva, create a mood board, you know, go ahead and find low budget, low cost items, DIY, paint some things, you know, get some things on Facebook market, secondhand. Do whatever you can to create a space 
take pictures with the phone, with the camera, borrow a camera, go to the library. You can rent cameras from the library. I mean, you know, find the resources and just do it. Just do it and just have fun. Don't think about it. Don't over-educate yourself. Don't, you know, feel like you have to do 20 million things or learn all the things that I talked about today. Just get started. You can learn on the way. Um, and this is just a guide to help you get started and to help you know kind of what if you don't know what you don't know or you don't know what you need to know and this is just a guide to help you know, kind of know what you need to know on your journey interior design and, and decorating is a is so fun it's such it not only is it fun but the joy that people that it brings to people i used to think like oh i always want to help people in whatever career that i had and i used to think oh like me doing interior design doesn't really help anybody, but it does. The way that a space makes people feel, it, it's amazing. Especially when you reveal a space to someone, they're just filled with joy and happiness and they're happy to be in their homes. We spend so much time in our homes and our daily lives that making it beautiful for someone is an amazing feeling. It, it really truly is. And it's helping people live better quality of lives because they live in a beautiful home, a functional home, a home that works for them and their needs. So. Just get started, don't overthink it, and just enjoy the ride and the process. You don't have to be perfect at first. You will learn and you will grow. As you can see, guys, I came from doing things like this. You know, this is the first bedroom and bathroom that I did to the latest bedroom and bathroom that I've completed. So guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope that this is going to be a guide to get you help you get started in interior design. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I will answer as many questions as possible. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know if you want to see more items like this on my channel. And I will see you in the next one.